up. Cold Thursday morning on his way to uh, John Sleeve for some dino action. Can't put on our dino here because we're uh, four wheel drive. We can only run our next four wheel drive cars on our dino, so a little bit inconvenient, but we're to uh, have a little drive out. So we're going to be swapping this while we're on dino. See what happens first. We'll go from there. So we've arrived at John Fleet. Very cold in here, not much warmer than outside, maybe colder, I don't know. Um, bit different setup to what we've got back home. A um, few more tractors in this barn than uh, in our dyno, so. Yeah, car's ready to go. We uh, just measure wheelbase, get dyno length set up properly, then we'll, uh, we'll reverse it on. Get it set up, ready to rock, get it strapped down and do some pulls. So we'll, uh, we'll be flashing it back to standard for the first dyno pulls. Then we'll do some testing uh, tune files and then um, sort of bigger turbo we've got to fit early, earlier on. And then we'll probably, if we get time, we'll swap intercooler while we're at dyno. Doubt we'll let air temps are going to be hot today regardless, so we might not see the full benefit, but we can see a difference. We'll see what happens. Have a talk to the big man himself. So, just ready to run it up standard. Five minutes, we'll uh, have some power figures. Hopefully, make standard power. Okay, no, no. So after a little bit of faffing around, getting it strapped on correctly and uh, in the right gear, the right combination of uh, ABS, ESP, fuses and what have you, which is annoying on this sort of thing. Turns out just running fourth gear, everything works. Um, it's cold, very cold in here. Okay, what is that temps are we getting? Four degrees, and that's that sensor just good. Pointing up here, this is something like 10 percent hiding out of the way. No fudging of figures going on here. So we managed to get 228 horsepower, 4,000 RPM or so, and 350, 355 foot pound of torque, so 2,000 dollars. So that's a standard file. It's got the exhaust and the swirl flaps removed and that sort of stuff. But this doesn't make any difference to power like we've already said in a few other videos. So, I'm running up with tune on, see what it does. Ran it 
up on the iTunes software. See here, we've gained 55 horsepower everywhere, pretty much, and um, nearly 100 foot pound everywhere again. So, decent increase. It's uh, kicking out 283 now, according to this dyno, but we're a little bit down as standard, so if we're saying we're 10 or 12 down. 15 or 16 down where we'd want to be uh, as we tune. We're not doing too bad to be honest. But this is the thing with dynos. They're not all created equal. Not everything does standard power, not everything does the exact same power tune. So we'll have another little play with uh, water injection and uh, then we'll start swapping turbo. Positive progress. We've, uh, I think it's getting colder as well. There's more air coming out. Um, yeah. So you can see here we've swapped some of the colours around. So sorry. 228 standard. 283 with the tune on it. 295 with a 50/50 water injection. But you'll see on the video it smokes a ton more with a water injection because the methanol is a fuel. So you're adding fuel to the fire, which if you're already on the edge of how much fuel you want to put in which we are already with a 2260 on the standard fueling system you're going to get some more smoke so it's good for a, a little bit of time obviously you've got the, the cooling properties of the water and the long cylinder pressures hopefully that if we measured it we'd see um, so yeah the, uh, the water injection is working it's doing exactly what it's advertised as and uh, we'll just check the level when we've uh, finished recording here and uh, see how much it's used, it's got a few dyno pulls, so we not expect it to use it. So yeah, next job, we're uh, the prime up, Paul's got his gloves on, gaskets are laid out, oil return in case it all goes wrong, and they're 60 quick haul, so we're uh, trying to do the best out of it coming. GTD 2872 VRK going on, it's a uh, custom turbo that we sell, it's a big, big turbine, we'll flip it around, Paul. You're not doing good on QVC. No. So yeah, see what it does. While we've been watching him, while we're eating the fish and chips, put a new turbo on, so it's ready to rock. So we'll uh, get it warmed up, get dyno run again, and see if we can uh, break the 300 barrier. ready to fit the dark side into cooler as you can see the original standard ones pretty much well half its size maybe a little bit smaller than that similar width but it's well past its best we see a lot of these when they've had a few little dints and scrapes and bumps in them they start to expand and um, inside all bits of metal start flaking away so it yours looks like this on the outside not too bad, we can start seeing it where the pins are really wide apart. Swap it before you need a new engine. So we'll see what inlet air temps we're getting. It's like minus two or something stupid in here. 
now, especially with the fan blowing at it. So we're not going to see a massive gain. I don't think we're going to see much horsepower gain, but we are getting up to, with this intercool, a 60 degree inlet air temp. So there's a chance it'll give us some horsepower. Might give us a little bit of spool. So we'll see what we can do. Right then, so the tuning's finally done. Still not got any warmer, so <coughs> freezing. I don't think I've got any feet left, but that doesn't matter, you don't need them. Um, so you can see the difference that we've gained. 228 to 340. Over the course of what, four hours, including having some fish and chips, so we've not done too bad. The impressive torque gains. The low end, we've lost a little bit compared to the 2260 on the tune as such, but we're no lower than standard anywhere here, so it's very, very good. We're, uh, we're all happy with it. Um, what I do want to highlight, didn't really explain it before, if you look on these graphs here that you've got, just load up the previous one. So these two are both including the meth injection, but they just lift up a little bit when you're talking about um, We're talking pre-meth and uh, post-meth. But you can look, between the pink and the red, the only change that we've made to this is an upgraded metering valve on the CP4 pump, which we didn't think could make as much difference, but that allowed us to add so much more fuel at the, at the bottom, so it didn't go into limp mode. We're still having a little dip at the end here that you can see. That's where the rail pressure is just dropping enough that as it changes gear, it's dropping into limp mode. So it didn't seem to do that on the road. Um, so we need to do a little bit more tweaking with the map. But worst case scenario, looking at this metering valve upgrade that we've done, you might not be able to have any more power from, say, 4,042 4, onwards. But if you can have another what, 50 foot pound of torque everywhere else, it's not going to be an expensive upgrade. It's going to be hundred quid maybe, something like that, so it's not going to be a, uh, a big deal. That's the stop gap between what we're doing next. The next upgrade for this car, to get any more from it, would be um, would be a bigger fuel pump. So we'll be putting a CP3 pump from the earlier engine on to start. See what that does. That should, in theory, let us max this turbocharger out, because at the minute we're running 17, 18 AFRs without the uh, water injection, so there's still a fairly big amount of power potential left there. And the turbo's only running 2.4 bar de boost, 2.3 bar de boost, maybe. We can run this at 2.7, 2.8. So it would be nice to do some more testing today, but we've done enough. We'll do some more testing with a bigger fuel pump in a few weeks. Um, we're going to do that. There are a couple of other bits we want to do on the car first. 
um, the wheels are all sorted need to get the tyres put on them and uh, yeah the intercooler made a big difference as well I'll just try and get those graphs up while we're here this dyno works a little bit different to uh, the one we've got I'll just hide them ones away so we'll go for pre-intercooler and post-intercooler uh, and we'll ignore them we'll ignore the meth ones for now so that between the purple and the blue there's nine horsepower and you can see the gains are pretty much everywhere so if that's not an endorsement for fitting a better intercooler if it's it says it's five degrees here i don't know about that it doesn't say five degrees so our intercooler will make a difference the inlet air tents that we logged in the pipe work went from 60 to 45 so on a summer's day an increase like that a decrease should i say like that will give you a bigger increase than this for definite so worthwhile upgrades it's not a lot of money for the horsepower the water injection surprised everybody the smoke output would put me off but luckily the water injection you can flick a switch and turn it off so if the, if the smoke's annoying you you can turn it off or you can run a weaker mixture and just accept that the intake air temps and uh, the EGTs might come down a little bit but you're not going to get the extra power for it see what happens so yeah all in all a very good day hopefully it's been interesting it's going to take some editing all this uh, footage that we've got um, but we've not done anything uh, that we should be doing everything's worked exactly as we hope it would um, so yeah at least it's better to realise that we might be what we're doing with some of the stuff we we'll leave that down to you guys